What's going on, y'all? Thanks for checking in the Cali's Take. You know what to do. Hit that like, subscribe button. Also hit that notification bell just so you can get the newest and the bonus content first. But hey, let's just go ahead and jump right in. You know, you have to ask yourself now, are the Clippers interested in a former franchise player, a former superstar player that they had in the past? It's very possible. A lot of things are are surfacing about it. A lot of tweets, uh, Sports Illustrated, a lot of, lot of uh, you know, comments and speculation on that around the uh, sports world currently. And the person I'm talking about is Blake Griffin. You know, it'd be a very weird scene to see Blake Griffin back with the Clippers only because he can't be the player that he once was. You know, once he was a mega superstar, once he had nuclear athleticism, once he was, you know, one of the faces of the league, I thought, at one time. I mean, I can remember him back in the day dunking at the over the car, the Kia car, in the uh, dunk contest, um, making hella commercials, you know, just everywhere, on TV, everywhere. Um, everywhere you look, Blake was there. You know what I'm saying? He was like the star of L.A. at that time, you know, because... Um, you know, it wasn't Le- no LeBron in L.A., it wasn't Kawhi Leonard, it wasn't, you know, Anthony Davis, Paul George, nobody like that was there in L.A. at the time. And Blake was a lone superstar in L.A., you know, around the 2011 era, you know, times like that. And, you know, he was, a, like I said, he was a big name. You know, he was, you know, he was a big thing. I actually felt like, you know, uh, the, the Kia car itself, you know, made a name again or made a name off of Blake Griffin because Blake Griffin supported Kia and he was like their sponsor, it seemed like. And then they became a sponsor for the NBA. And then, you know, Kia is still a sponsor for the NBA as we are in the current present now. So I feel like Blake even did things like that, you know, helped. You know, Kia, the car brand actually, you know, build a name more so than what they had, you know, back in the day in regards to popularity anyway. Um, so I feel like, you know, Blake has always been a, a, a big name, you know, in the NBA or he was a big name in the NBA at one point until, you know, he kept getting knee injuries, knee injury after knee injury. Um, you know, he just couldn't really stay healthy, you know, because he pretty much just used all athleticism, you know, at that time. You know, didn't really didn't have a jump shot. You know, he kind of reminded me of like Giannis. Now Giannis uses pretty much all athleticism, don't really have a jump shot. And you just hope Giannis stays healthy. You know what I'm saying? Same thing you hope for Blake Griffin back then, but it just didn't work out for him that way. Now he's, you know, went from, you know, a superstar to um, a star player. When he went to Detroit, he still had somewhat of a name, but Detroit was so trash. I mean, it really didn't matter. He was averaging like 20 plus points a game, I think, with Detroit just a, just a few seasons ago. And now he's um, down to rock bottom, if you ask me, only averaging like six points a game, you know, not really playing on the level that he used to play on. But, you know, a lot of that is due to Steve Nash not playing him. And the fact that, you know, Blake Griffin really, if you look, if you look at it, he's really washed compared to what he used to be. But, you know, I still feel like Blake has some good things about him. You know, he can knock down a three. He's not the best three-point shooter in the league, but he has developed a jump shot over time. And, you know, he, he draws fouls. You know, he takes charges, he plays, he tries hard on defense. He's not the greatest defender, not even nearly close, but he tries hard and he's still a big body in the paint and he still can disrupt a lot of things. And the way, like I said, the way he draws charges and, you know, offensive fouls, which causes turnovers for the other team, definitely can help. I mean, even in the, even in the Brooklyn series, you know, the few little series or plays that the, the little time that he played, he made an impact every time he was in the game, whether it was drawing offensive fouls, knocking down a couple of threes, you know, um, playing hard-nosed defense, you know, getting a, helping getting a few stops on defense to allow the Nets to try to make a run in those last two games of the series where um, Steve Nash finally, you know, took the chain off his neck and let him go in there because they had nothing else to lose. So, I mean, you know, he, um, he, he can't contribute anywhere near where he could, but he's still a big body. And, you know, the Clippers do need uh, more size. You know, the Clippers are looking for like maybe um, I don't know if they're looking for more like a, a backup power forward 
to Marcus Morris or if they're going to trade Marcus Morris and get some extra pieces, um, you know, do you know, with his contract and everything, you know, who knows? But um, it would definitely be um, weird slash good if Blake Griffin happened to join the uh, Clippers once again. Because like I said, it'd be, it'd be weird to see him, you know, sitting on the bench, not probably getting that much playing time. And, you know, the fact that it would be good in a sense to see him come back to the Clippers. And if they hypothetically won the championship this upcoming year, it would be great to see Blake Griffin get a championship with the team that he started with because he started the team and really put them on the map. You know, Lob City really um, opened up a lot of doors for the Clippers in regards to people showing them respect and, you know, at least being a, a maybe not a contender for a championship, which I think one or two years they were a contender for a championship because they did have Chris Paul and he was, you know, more so in his prime than and so was Blake and DeAndre Jordan was in his prime too. Even though I thought DeAndre Jordan was always been a trash player to me. Never really been impressed by his game at all. He just only thing he do is catch alleys and lobs and that's the only way he scores. He's just predominantly trash. I mean he can play a little bit of defense, but at the same time, I mean the guy's seven foot, he should be able to block some shots. So I really didn't think they had a big three. I thought they had like a, a big two or maybe a two and a half. Um, that's just my opinion. The reason why I think the operation didn't work that well. And of course, having Doc Rivers, that never helps because he's known for blowing 3-1 leads. He's known for not making adjustments. And I mean, hell, if you look at the Toronto and uh, Philly series, now it's 3-2 when Toronto, when Philly was up 3-0. So hopefully Philly closes it out, you know, maybe tonight or something like that. But we'll have to see how that goes. I mean, you never know with Doc Rivers. I mean, I wouldn't be surprised if Toronto comebacks and win. I mean, because Doc is just not a good coach in regards to making adjustments. He's good with the basics, but the basics don't win you championships all the time. He just won a championship because back then because he had, you know, the big three on Boston before they actually, actually big four on Boston before they actually flailed out and flamed out. But um, that's another story for another day. But um, as I said before, it would be weird slash good seeing Blake on there. It'd be great to see him, you know, if the Clippers did pick him up, you know, just to have extra size. I said, you know, the Clippers do need more size. They can use another big man, you know, just to have more size on their roster and, you know, to make it more interchangeable for them on their roster, you know, with, uh, you know, uh, Zubak and Hartenstein and you know really I think they need another center to be honest with you I don't know if uh, Blake, Blake Griffin can you know he's more like a power forward but he can play center he's played center before in his career you know he has you know um, back in his day he's played power forward and the center position before so you know he can you know he, he, he can't really guard anybody that much but he can play hard and rough on defense and like I said he's good at causing turnovers in regards to taking charges and you know getting turnovers before the other team and everything and like I said you know maybe he could come in there and, and 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 play a little bit better than he did with the Nets because I think he'll get more opportunities with the Clippers and I can say this much if he hasn't anything left in him you know Ty Lue would get the best out of him I mean the way Ty Lue gets the best out of players who have no name at all who has no uh anything and you know everything like that I mean he can definitely find a way to get something out of Blake Griffin I mean look what he did with players like uh Amir Coffey and players like that you know uh, Eric Bledsoe even played decent at times with the Clippers when he was there for the short time he was and they ended up trading him mid-season but still they they still got a little something out of him in certain games and you know I didn't think he was a good fit for the Clippers but there were games where he did play well and he did contribute to some of their wins you know this past season so if he can get thing if, if he can if Ty Lue can pull strings out of a player like that he can pull some type of strings out of Blake Griffin Blake Griffin will never be able to score be the player he once was and he is washed I'll give you that he is washed but he can like I said he, he, he can make an impact somehow and like I said he would definitely be one of the fan favorites 
favorites in there in LA. And like I said, you know, if any coach can get anything out of him, it would be Ty Lue. Ty Lue just knows how to do that with certain players. I mean, with all his players. So, you know, that would be a great challenge for Ty Lue. And um, like I said, you know, it would be a I guess like a Cinderella type story if, you know, Blake happened to go back to, you know, uh, the Clippers to play with Kawhi and PG and, you know, see how they have evolved as the players that they are and to the superstar players that they are. You know, back when he was a superstar, they weren't, you know what I'm saying? So, you know, um, watching them evolve and do their thing and he just come off the bench and give them, you know, a good eight to 15 minutes of, you know, hard nosed defense and, um, you know, maybe knock down a shot or two here and there. You know, that would be all they need out of Blake Griffin just to have an extra body on the bench and more size. And um, like I said, I think he still would be a fan favorite just because of who he was and, you know, who a, a lot of people in Clippers Nation liked him and looked up to him back then. You know, to see him come back to the team he started on to win a championship would be a great story for him. And, um, you know, that would just be a great ending to his career, I think. You know what I'm saying? I think he would actually probably retire if he won a championship, you know, with the Clippers. I think he would just let it go after that because that would be like mission complete. You started with this team. You were a superstar. You fell far from grace. You're not athletic as you used to be you don't have the name you used to you're not the superstar you used to be but you find your way all the way back and journey all the way back to the team you started with and you're sitting on the bench and you're getting some good minutes because you're playing with a coach if they did get Blake Griffin would that would believe in him and give him minutes and you know let him contribute somehow and if they somehow pull off a championship I mean that's the that, that's the uh you know walking away from the game in paradise you know for Blake Griffin so I mean that would be a very interesting uh situation if it happened I see Blake Griffin is liking the tweets about uh him reuniting with the Clippers and everything like that he did leave on a bad note for what I remember I can't remember the whole situation but he did leave on somewhat of a shaky or questionable note but regardless of that you know he still um you know it's Blake Griffin and a lot of people still revere him the same way in LA because they remember how you know dynamic of a you know athletic uh human being he was and how he excited the NBA world and how he was he like I said at one time I thought he was one of the faces you know of the NBA of course it's always been LeBron you know and in Kobe Bryant you know of course but I mean I thought he was on his way to being one of the faces in the NBA as far as his superstardom and his growth as a star player back then he just couldn't sustain it over time due to injuries but he definitely was you know, on his way to being, you know, really even bigger than what he was at the time. So, you know, got to give him credit for that. But um, like I said, I mean, the Clippers can always use size and they wouldn't have to really put out much money or any anything or give up any depth really to get a player like Blake Griffin. He is a free agent anyway, I believe. So having him on the roster is definitely just an extra added additional piece. And um, it definitely can't hurt. Um, I don't know if it'd be a distraction for the Clippers. I'm not sure. Um... I don't think it would be a distraction because everybody knows Blake is not the player he was and he can't, you know, be the superstar he ever was in the past. And he knows that. So, I mean, I don't think it'd be too much of a distraction. I mean, I think the media would make a lot out of it in the beginning simply because, you know, Blake is back. Blake returns to his home team where he got drafted, you know, and um, is trying to help the Clippers win a championship. That would be the narrative. So if that's the narrative, then, I mean, you know, uh, of course, he can't help a team win a championship, but he could definitely be a part of a team that's uh, trying to win a championship, I believe, because Blake knows he has to go out there and earn every single minute. He knows he has to go out there and play hard. If he gets five minutes on the floor, he's got to make an impact. And that's his mind state. He has to try to draw fouls or knock down a big three or, you know, whatever the case may be. You know, he... he you know, he, he definitely needs to make an impact whatever minutes he gets. And then, of course, it'd be great, you know, if Ty Lue puts him in a game and you see him maybe do uh, maybe not a spin move or anything like that into a dunk like he used to do. But maybe just to see him go up and get a dunk in there. You know, I think the crowd will go overly hype if they seen him do that, because a lot of people think he can't even probably dunk the way not nearly remotely the way he used to. So just to see him get up there and do a dunk is it, it would be exciting. And I still think he could do, you know, a few dunks here and there. But um, I guess, like I said, it, it would it would be a good thing to see him get a championship with, you know, the journeys that he's taken through all these other teams that he's going to and nothing is working out. It's not working out the Nets. It didn't work out with the Pistons. You know, what I'm saying like, you know, and when he left 
he, he left on bad terms in um on, in Clipper Nation and like I said you know for him to end back up where he started it would be a great thing if he could especially if he can get a championship out of it but um I like to see what happens out the situation I don't believe that it will happen but I'm not ruling it out because you just never know especially with the NBA so um we'll see how it goes it definitely would be a, a interesting you know topic to talk about all the time in regards to having Blake Griffin on the side and you know him being a part of the team again but um, um, we'll see how it pans out and what the Clippers decide to do. But hey, that's my take on everything. Leave any comments in the comment section as always. And uh, hey, Kelly out. Uh-huh.